Namaste everyone. Welcome to MMK The Eagle View. Uh, today we are going to see uh, three major achievements which our defense forces and allied organizations have done for the nation. Uh, so let's start with uh, INS Vikrant, the Indian Navy. We know the flagship uh, aircraft carrier INS Vikrant. Uh, it is equipped, it's, 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 a, it's not a standalone ship as we all think. It's a battle group in itself. When we uh, sp think about America, America has moved one warship close to, you know, aircraft carrier close to Gulf of uh, Eden, Gulf of Oman. And then suddenly all the countries have tucked their tail inside. Now, what does one ship makes that much of a difference in a battlefield? Because it's a fighting unit in itself. So similarly, when we bought INS Vikrant, uh, we tried uh, equipping them with uh, the MiG series which we currently have and then subsequently Tejas. So all these aircrafts uh, took off and no frequent landing and takeoff happens because it's supposed to serve as a airfield for these aircrafts. Aircrafts, uh, an aircraft carrier without aircraft doesn't mean anything. Now the third level is, how will we be able to land an unmanned aerial vehicle, a UAV or an armed drone. Drone is a civilian term which uh, people generally use. The military uh, specifies it as UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. So Indian Navy has successfully tested an UAV landing and takeoff in INS Vikrant. It's a big major achievement. Uh, this project was kept top secret and one successful trials were concerned, you know, when it has been done. Navy now revealed that we have done it uh, in this thing and this will also be exhibited in the oncoming uh, naval exercise, uh, the global uh, exercise which is going to happen in Milan, uh, Italy. So what does it uh, mean altogether? Who has already done it? China has posted some pictures in social media and their propaganda channels uh, keeping a UAV on their uh, carriers, uh, ship carriers. But eventually there is no evidence of that being able to take off and land on an aircraft carrier. So this has been done uh, and exhibited only by two countries. First is America and second is UK. The third country to do and prove it is India. So we all need to be proud of our Navy because uh, naval officers per se, they don't, they are not only uh, into combat, they are also technocrats. So this is the level of expertise uh, which is required to modernize your Navy. Uh, so they have succeeded in uh, making so. So the deck design of the deck is an innovation which was done by the navy so now we are able to land a uav so next step would be to land a ucav unmanned combat aerial vehicle third step is to land an unmanned fighter jet u of chase so this is going to give a major boost in terms of our reconnaissance uh, patrolling maritime reconnaissance maritime security and in, in fact uh, more firepower as well so, uh, other feat is, if you want to buy such cutting edge technologies from elsewhere, from other countries, you have to pay a bomb. This, these technologies are very, very expensive. If you want to buy from America or countries like Israel, they are going to charge you a bomb for it. This has been indigenously made. So, we are going to save a lot of forex uh, by doing so. Uh, our uh, make in India is, uh, which started like seven, eight years before. We, start, we have started seeing those fruits being, uh, you know, ripened now. We are, we are taking it. We are enjoying those privileges which was launched by this ambitious Make in India project and later on the Self-Reliance Atman Nirbar project. Now, uh, historically we had two uh, drones. One is Heron and one is Searcher. Both are Israeli made. This was bought, bought during Watch by G Zera way back in 20, uh, 2000. Uh, these drones are very very effective uh, which is uh, part of communication intelligence army does it uh, sorry air force and uh, navy both uh, they use it extensively in our northern eastern and uh, maritime borders but the problem with this is it can only take it really requires a longer runway so it can take off only from a land base it has to be an air base which is based in the land so its range uh, limitations are there it can go fly to a certain distance Say for example in Bay of Bengal, it takes off from Vaisak, goes 200 kilometers and flies back. Now when you are able to land this uh, such an UAV uh, in an aircraft and uh, make it take off and land in an aircraft carrier, imagine our INS Vikrant moving close to Malacca Strait, which is a choke point of China and then we leave this, uh, take off this uh, UAV, it can give an extended range of almost 2500 plus nautical miles. That's the uh, you know, advantage it gives in terms of extension of range which means reconnaissance effective reconnaissance effective surveillance 
and maritime security so hope you have got this uh, point now secondly uh, when you are able to land an unmanned combat aerial vehicle ucav or an unmanned fighter jet it keeps your battle group safe away from the enemy uh, missile range and it will be able to give you it gives you the strength of uh, like america which can take off an uav uh, somewhere in the gulf and then fly over afghanistan and take off those targets which their military requires so such is the advantage uh, this has given this will be exhibited uh, to public uh, shortly and the good and the greatest thing is this entire uh, landing and take off has been uh, done by a indian company called sagar defense industries based out of pune and uh, they have done this uh, effectively along with the indian navy uh, you know which is the user so it also gives us advantage in terms of communication uh, communication between various warships in the battlefield we have a dedicated uh, satellite for naval communication that's called rukmani so this will also help us to communicate effectively uh, in terms of, you know during an active combat situation so it, it's a clear win win situation for us only us and uk has done it the third is india salute uh, to the indian navy and salute to sagar defense system they have done really a big big achievement uh, third is uh, to add on to this is there is a drone called uh, varuna which was made by sagar defense industries it's a it's sorry it's a uav unmanned aerial vehicle capable of taking passengers it's a uav passenger uav that's also been tested so navy is also keen to acquire those stuff as well you know to move with their the naval personnel from land to sea or uh, it, it it you know faster mobilization of troops within ships so it gives us a lot of advantage in terms of uh, mobility crew mobility so the second great achievement which we want to see today is uh, gatak gatak is a ucav unmanned combat aerial vehicle uh, a project which has been taken by uh, drdo so three main things it is completely stealth radar scan detected it is combat uh, drone it can deliver uh, payload of uh, explosives on an enemy target and it's a make in india made in india drone so this drone's engine like tejas we had made our aircraft but the engine came, comes from uh, ge in this case this is a kaveri uh, 50 kn uh, class engine a dry engine uh, aircraft engine which drdo has been struggling to make it uh, 80 k k n plus so that it can we put in uh, tejas or uh, our own amcs we are still not able to achieve it so what they have done is it's a kind of a tactical uh, move it's semi strategical and tactical move they have picked up this engine and they made a stealth drone the composite used uh, stealth drone needs to have uh, needs to uh, you know it should not be giving any radar signatures the moment it uh, generates some heat the radar is going to pick up so this composite material a fiber composite material has been used that's again uh, purely made in india this material is made by uh, one of a very old uh, industry you know conglomerate called uh, murugappa industries which make cycles for us so they have done this uh, achievement so they have already projected it so sir drdo has not disclosed it yet but we can assume that uh, it's purely an indian made composite material with absolutely zero radar signatures so it, it is completely stealth the enemy radars can pick it up uh, it is uh, it can deliver a payload it is it's an armed drone it can uh, t- take on enemy targets and the third thing is it doesn't require any uh, radars uh, guidance systems or a pilot it takes up on its own the targets are pre programmed it goes it delivers the payload destroys the target flies back and lands on its own it, it's completely autonomous so this gives a major boost to us what you see on the picture is all a miniature version of this a small version of this they call it a swift stealth uh, stealth wing the uh, wing flying test bed soon you will see a bigger version of this which can deliver much larger uh, uh, rockets and uh, missiles and it will be completely autonomous and stealth so this is a major achievement uh, for us at this point of time we can see that it's as a full fledged operational uh, war machine maybe in the coming next 3 uh, to 4 years the third major achievement we want to highlight is uh, akash missile yes akash we all know that the missile has been uh, in service for quite some time but what indian air force has done uh, in uh, in a war exercise called astra shakti astra shakti was uh, air force exercise conducted in andhra pradesh uh, at a week before so indian air force has successfully demonstrated uh, a surface to aerial missile akash taking on four targets simultaneously so there were four incoming uh, uavs unmanned aerial vehicles is able to take on 
four targets simultaneously and it has hit for all the four targets simultaneously it's a big major achievement so if it effectively can take on four targets multiple targets within a 30 kilometer range assuming that we have a combat situation as pakistan or china when the fighter jet form takes off it doesn't a single aircraft doesn't come it comes as a formation so it generally we within 30 to 50 kilometer of uh, you know radius so now this can one missile can take off four aerial targets at any given point of time so this is a major achievement which has done and we are the first country in the world to do it we all should be proud of our indian air force and uh, the scientists associated with this so uh, how it works it has got a command uh, guidance so there are radars which are the eyes for uh, the air force so the radar picks up the incoming aircraft the command guidance gives it to the uh, the radar picks up the flr picks it up gives it to the command post the command post in, in turn gives it to the launcher the launchers uh, which physically launch a uh, missile uh, towards an incoming hostile uh, aerial object they program it and then the four targets up to four targets can be taken off simultaneously who knows it may be multiple uh, we don't want to disclose it maybe but uh, the bigger achievement in this is we are the first country in the world to to use one surface to aerial missile akash to take on four aerial targets this gives us a clear advantage and aerial dominance for adversaries like uh, pakistan and china uh, because if firstly you are going to cut down your cost by one fourth it can take off uh, one missile can take off uh, you know and take on uh, four different aircrafts four aircrafts within a 30 kilometer radius it also gives a very solid air defense system now akash being an indigenous air defense system lot of countries have been showing interest in procuring this akash missile defense systems now when we are able to demonstrate this to the world that one missile can take on four aerial targets this is going to give a very major advantage in terms of our make in india and then export ambitions so we have a sizable export ambition as far as defense equipments are concerned so this is going to give that boost to us so thanks to indian air force and uh, the people who worked this and scientists and the crew who worked for this so we hope you have understood the very strategic and the importance of all these three major achievements one done by indian navy in ins vikram and second by drdo uh, from the test ranges of karnataka in chitradurga the project gartak and third by indian air force akash engaging multiple aerial targets simultaneously first time ever in the world hope you like this video do like share and subscribe thank you all jai hind